Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with that zucchini spaghetti Stanley Tucci loves. That's right, after listening to Stanley Tucci lose his mind about this pasta and calling it life-changing and one of the best things he's ever eaten, I decided I needed to give it a try. And while this might not look like something people would fly halfway around the world to eat, once you make it, it all makes sense. Okay, the Tucci was not exaggerating. This really is unbelievably delicious. And to get started, we'll go ahead and prep the main ingredient, some fresh zucchini. And if you have a garden like I do, not only will you have maybe a couple different varieties, but you'll have a few different sizes as well, which does not matter at all. Okay, the only thing that really matters is that we slice these exactly the same thickness. And ideally, that's going to be about an eighth of an inch, which we can certainly do using a knife, which is how the cook in the show where I saw this did it. But to save time and to get even more accurate slices, if you happen to have one of these inexpensive vegetable slicers, also known as mandolins, this really does make the job way faster and easier. With the only drawback being, if you're not careful, there's a pretty good chance you're gonna slice your fingertips off. So please use the guard or a protective glove. But no matter what method you use, we're probably gonna to wanna to slice up three zucchini per portion, which sounds like a lot, but it's not. All right, these things really cook down and the amounts you're seeing in this video are only gonna make two portions. And that's it, once our zucchini is sliced, we have to cook it. And by cook it, I mean we need to deep fry it, which according to the restaurant Mr. Tucci was at, has to be done in sunflower oil, which I've heated up to 350. And we're gonna to wanna to fry this zucchini for about four to five minutes, or until it's lightly brown. And of course, we're gonna to wanna to do this in a few smaller batches, especially if you have a tiny fryer like I do. Or of course you can set up a deep fry station with a Dutch oven and do like two or three times as much at one time. And yes, in case you're wondering, I have tried this using all the other cooking methods. Okay, I've broiled these, I've baked these, I've pan fried them. And you'll just have to take my word for it that this is by far the best method. And trust me, I'm not gonna have you go through the time and mess and trouble of deep frying something if it wasn't that important. So this really is critical. All right, as they say in Italy, if you don't fry, it's not as fly, which sounds a lot cooler in Italian. But anyway, once that is lightly browned and hopefully looking a little something like this, We'll go ahead and shake off the excess oil and then drain that on some paper towels. And we'll go ahead and spread those out a bit. And then we'll continue on until all our zucchini is fried. Oh, and by the way, since we're setting up a deep fry station, of course you're just not making this. You might as well also do our Korean fried chicken recipe or maybe our famous crispy onion rings and maybe even sneak in a quick batch of donuts. But anyway, what we'll do once we have our zucchini chips fried to a nice golden brown is let them cool down draining on the paper towels until they're room temp. At which point we're gonna transfer those into a bowl, which we will then wrap and pop in the fridge overnight. Oh yeah, if you want this today, you gotta to start it yesterday. But having said that, if you didn't wait and just went ahead and made this spaghetti, it would probably still be pretty good. But apparently letting these sit overnight in the fridge does something magical. It just makes the sauce taste better. But no one can really explain why, or at least not to Stanley Tucci and me. But anyway, I did decide to follow directions and pop those in the fridge overnight, at which point it was ready to put this super simple sauce together, which is gonna start by heating a couple tablespoons of olive oil in a pan over medium heat, to which we will now add our day old cold zucchini. And yes, if you wanna sizzle a clove of garlic in that oil, feel free. Some people do and some people don't. But the people that showed Stanley Tucci how to make this didn't, so I'm not. But I am gonna add a nice big pinch of salt and then all we're gonna do is cook this zucchini on medium heat, stirring occasionally until it starts releasing those natural juices and starts to soften and break down. And as this continues to cook, we'll wanna monitor how much liquid's coming out, which might be enough to give us the texture we want, but chances are you're gonna to have to add a little additional liquid, which is gonna be very easy in this case, since we should have a pot of boiling salted water right next to us in which we're gonna cook our spaghetti. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple splashes so it's not quite as dry. And keep in mind, there is gonna be some water attached to the spaghetti as we transfer it into this pan. So we don't wanna overdo it. But the point is, don't be afraid to use that pasta water to adjust. And then once our zucchini does start to soften up, what we'll do is use the edge of our spoon or spatula to break it up into as small pieces as we want. And how much this gets broken up is gonna be up to you. I mean, you are after all the puccini of your zucchini. And speaking of poor bohemians, besides being super simple and incredibly delicious, this is also one of the most affordable sauces you will ever make. 
But anyway, what I was saying is we're going to break this up as it cooks. And we can just break it up a little bit or not at all and have a chunky sauce. Or on the other end of the spectrum, we can work this until it's basically a puree, which is sort of how I like it, since I think it's going to coat the spaghetti a little better. Speaking of which, once our spaghetti is about two minutes away from being perfectly done, which if you're asking me, and probably Stanley Tucci as well, should be what our Italian friends call al dente, which translates to don't overcook it until it's soft. But anyway, when our spaghetti is close, we'll reduce our heat down to low, and we'll toss in a little bit of torn basil, as well as the secret ingredient, a couple tablespoons of butter, and we'll give that a stir until our butter disappears and emulsifies beautifully into the sauce. And by far my favorite part of the episode where I saw this pasta was when the cook was explaining to Stanley Tucci that they were gonna put in a little bit of butter. But the amount he showed on camera was like literally a half a teaspoon. And when I saw that, I was like, no way. There is way more butter in this pasta, based on what the final dish looks like. So my theory is they knew they had to show there was butter in it, but they didn't want to show how much they put in, so that people at home could never get it as good as they served it at the restaurant. Which, by the way, I appreciate. But anyway, I'm exposing their secret, and as soon as that butter's mixed in and our spaghetti's done, we'll go ahead and transfer it right into the sauce, which I do by fishing it out with tongs right from the pot. And that way a little bit of water comes along with it, which is hopefully gonna give this sauce the exact texture I want. So we will use our tongs to stir all this together. And then as soon as our spaghetti is coated, we will stop and mix in some grated cheese, which is supposed to be this beautiful aged cow's milk provolone, provolone del Monaco, I believe it's called, which might be tricky for us to find. So a lot of people substitute like 60% pecorino and 40% Reggiano Parmesan. And in case you're keeping score at home, I'm actually using half Parmesan and half a local cheese called Toma, because Michelle thought that combo would be a nice substitute. And Michelle knows her cheeses, so that's what I went with. And that's it, once our cheese is mixed in, we can do one final adjustment with a splash of pasta water. But if yours is looking fine as is, don't bother. And other than giving us a taste for salt, I think we were ready to plate up, which I'm gonna do exactly like they did in the show, by twirling it in a ladle with a meat fork, which makes for a nice tight presentation. And I mean that both ways. And then we'll finish up with a little more grated cheese if we want. Plus maybe a small sprig of basil. Especially if we have to take some pictures. And that's it. After taking a few of those, I grabbed a fork and dug in. And when I heard Stanley Tucci describing this in such glowing terms, like life-changing, unbelievable, and one of the best things he's ever eaten, pasta or otherwise, I was thinking, I'm sure it's good, but it can't be that good. Well, you know what? It truly is. Right, like I said in the intro, he was not exaggerating, which makes him the first New Yorker not to. And by frying that zucchini golden brown, it gives it this beautiful toasty sweetness, but also sort of a very meaty savoriness. And there's no way anyone eating this would think it was only made with like three or four ingredients. And besides this being perfect for anyone to make, it's especially true if you have a vegetable garden. Okay, as the old saying goes, show me somebody that grows zucchini, and I'll show you somebody with too much zucchini. Well, this, my friends, is a great way to use it up. And by the way, if you don't want to deep fry in the house, just grab yourself a nice long extension cord and do it on a table out in the backyard or in the garage. Since I know not everyone's going to be crazy about the deep frying step, but like I said, I tested other methods, and it is absolutely critical here. But anyway, that's it. My take on spaghetti alla Nerano. All right, I've had some amazing vegetable-based spaghettis before, but none of them could touch this. Or should I say Tucci this? Which reminds me a very special thank you to Stanley Tucci for flying to Italy to film the show where I saw this. Okay, I've made zucchini spaghetti before, but never with it deep fried. So a very sincere grazie to everyone involved, even though they tried to trick us with the butter amount. But anyway, thank you to them for sharing. And now you need to make this and share it with someone else, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts. A printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.